Hey everyone, uh, I'd like to quickly inform you about the odd structure of this video. It started off as a Gwent Let's Play, the card game I streamed yesterday, or the whenever I streamed it. And the game crashed, so I decided to turn it into sort of a podcast. So that might, that'll kind of, it happens very early that this turns into sort of a podcast. So I'd like to apologize if it's kind of really weird that I start off a Let's Play and I'm like, yay, let's play some Gwent. And it's not Gwent, it's just me talking over a static image. I know it's kind of weird, but I hope you enjoy anyways. What is up all you cool cats, welcome back to Platinum Zero, where today we'll be playing some Gwent, because... Slight addiction isn't the right word to cover it, that's for sure. So yeah, we're playing Gwent, because I like Gwent. I like cards. Cards are fun. <coughs> Excuse me. We do what must be done. Oh, Alright. Get this going. So, uh, get rid of this running frost for the line. I think this is good. Yep, this is good. Opponent is replacing cards. Alright. Alright. Come on, opponent, hurry up. We don't have time to wait. We got a show to, show to do. <sighs> Alright. Run while you're still able. <laughs> Just start off with taunting. Also, apparently it's the opponent's turn first. Fire Lady 44 that's a good name. That's a pretty good name. It's it's no Dan is at board, that's for sure. Because that is basically the be-all, end-all for names, but it's pretty good. Alright, play a card. Any card? There's no, there's no taunt that tells your opponent, hey, why don't you freaking hurry up and play a card? Six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. What happens when you run out the timer? Because I've never seen that happen. I think my game's frozen. I don't think it's that my opponent didn't choose a card so much as my opponent doesn't exist anymore. Cause the game's just, just did zero. A grave error. Thank you. That was very kind. Watch closely. You might just learn something. Yeah, I think my game's frozen. <laughs> Mute opponent. Curses! Dang it! I'm upset because my game's frozen. Ah, uh, why you do this? Why you do this? Oh, I, I just realized you both you can see both of your leader cards. What does your leader card do? Mulligan? Oh, that makes sense. <sighs> Alright, I how do I yeah, forfeit. Alright. So I think that'll be it for today. My game just broke, I believe. 
just forfeit, forfeit. I'm mashing the right button, by the way. Okay, skip. Okay, skip her turn. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I don't know what to do now. So, we're going to turn this into a podcast. Hey, Well, it's not really a podcast, because it's just one person. Is there a one-man podcast? I don't know. This is, turn this is now a talky thing. Put up an image on the screen, cover all this garbage, we're just going to talk, and if the game comes back, then... We'll 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 see how it goes. Anyways, hi, welcome. Oh, if I had a po my own podcast, what would I do? What would I call it? Cause I know we call the podcast I do with Joel that I post. I think I posted only one video onto this channel. Was that? Which, by the way, the editing was done by him, which is why it's got some random picture of an anime babe on it. Don't know why he chose that. It's a really stupid decision, but whatever. Um, I think it's Hatsune Miku, actually, which is even weirder, but whatever. Anyways, what he could have done is he could have just placed the image. He's he's a lazy editor, that's what he is. He could have just placed, like, our profile images on, the, like, the four corners of the screen. Well, it's only three of us, so have, like, one blank sp black space on the top or whatever. But it's... I'm pretty sure that's not that difficult to do. You can either you can like use photo image fo photo editing software to create that as an image or just have a black background on the video and then edit in with the video editing software the four images and then just don't you know move them don't interact with them so you don't uh, excuse me mess it up and make it harder for yourself. It's not that difficult. I would do it if I had a computer and like editing software, you know, if, 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 if need, if I had a computer, I would totally edit the podcast because I don't do much else. I would also make better videos that aren't on the PS4 and don't crash, uh, randomly, but you know, that's, that's fine. So anyways, what was I talking about before? All right. What would I call my own podcast? It would have to be like something that fits with the channel you know I think I think that'd be pretty interesting to do what that doesn't make sense <laughs> anyways I think it, it would have to be something that like fits with the channel you know we got the motif of platinum zero the love like the, not even love addiction to persona specifically persona 5 at this point uh furry aspect I don't know I'll come up with a good name, probably in the middle of me talking about this. That's what I'm going to name this. This is going to be the equivalent of a podcast now, because why not? Why shouldn't I? Let's see. Um, well, I'm going to come up with a good name. I got this. I don't got this. The Platinum Cast? That's good. That's actually a really good one. Platinum Cast. I like that. I was gonna say Furcast, but that makes it seem like it's a podcast like from the furry community, like something official. Which not not really. Nothing on my channel is official. Every game I own is actually pirated. True story. I'm lying. Don't believe me. <laughs> it was just a joke meant to emphasize the fact that everything I do on this channel is like trash unofficial. Not working not like hundred percent fine. Speaking of not working, the game's still frozen. By the way, so that's fun. Let's see. I think one of the I'm th I think doing a podcast would be super neat. Maybe stream the podcast so that it could be longer, and I could do it like Frankie or like Bad Cyborg or someone. It depends on who I can get, but hey, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I think having my own podcast would be super neat. Because 
I'd be able to sort of, you know, have my own podcast instead of being on the free-for-all, which is basically just like the most just aggressive podcast you'll ever watch. It's like, imagine the Rooster Teeth podcast, but everyone is Michael and also Gavin at the same time. So they say things and then everyone else instantly jumps on each other for any mistakes made, any weird comments said, any like odd opinion or like strange likes or dislikes. That's that's the podcast in a nutshell. Just like, just clamoring over each other to like hate each other. If I had a podcast, it'd be freaking, there's a little, little, little tiny little flies in my house. Especially in the office, there's one who just, whenever I'm just playing a game normally, it just flies around off in the distance. But when I'm recording, it goes for my eyes. Seriously, that thing just, it just goes straight for the eyes and it's annoying and I hate it. And I also hate insects in general. If you like insects, they are pretty interesting. So fair enough. But still, you gotta admit, especially spiders, spiders are the worst. I have like immense arachnophobia. They freak me out to no end. I hate them. All spiders are horrible. Anyways. Whoa, look at these unpopular opinions. Spiders are bad? Oh my god, that's insane. What are you talking about? I know. Me, good old, your, your, your friendly neighborhood Michael, stating that spiders are frightening? I am making new ground here, alright? Anyways. So... I recently bought, I found, I was, I was at a store, for reasons, I was at a Five Below, and, y yeah, it's, it's, it's not a fun place, I've, I, I have a weird, uh, relationship with that place, because I worked there for a short while, for a month, because I was part-time seasonal, and the season was the Christmas season, and I, like, applied in, uh, November? So, you know, I didn't have much time at that Five Below. But, the one thing I never liked about that place was how hard they tried to be hip with the kids. It's, whew, whew, it's, ooh, it's too much. It's too many memes. It's like corporate businesses trying way too hard to be like hip with the kids. Which, it, it wasn't really the fault of like anyone who worked there. It's like, you know, the head, head, head of, you know, Five Below industries chose hey let's try to be hip with the kids so i don't blame anyone it's, it's not really it's just stupid but um i was there recently shopping and i found two games that i remember hearing were average at worst and above average at best and it was starhawk on the ps3 and battleborn on the playstation 4 so as evidenced by the fact that the shop is called five below sit down for this because this ev this it, this information i'm giving you right now is going to blow your mind the games for five dollars i know i know calm down it's all right things like that can happen nowadays it's a crazy world we live in cats and dogs are living together just same bed creating all sorts of mutant aberration Ab ab you know what i mean you know the joke I'm making. So, I purchased these games, and I remember hearing that they were pretty bad. And then I, I've recently been playing Battleborn. Might play that for the channel, who knows. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing with my life anymore. And it's really fun. It's really good. If you like games like Overwatch or Paladins, then you're gonna wa like Battleborn. Especially if you're really into the the Borderlands universe, where it's, you know, that wacky, you know, over-the-top kind of thing. Like, if you like that, then you're gonna like the world in Battleborn, because it's basically just, uh, Borderlands, but a MOBA, kind of. 
<coughs> oh my goodness, I'm dying. So, I was having tons of fun with Battleborn, and then I played some Starhawk, and that's also pretty good too. It's like, have you ever played one of those, like, budget games that are way better than they should be? Things like Mirror's Edge, um, Dead Space 1 was like, it was obviously kind of like, you know, we don't have a lot of money, but we want to make a really good game kind of thing. And Starhawk, Starhawk is a lot like that. And it's got this really cool, like, motif that I love, which is like, it's a, it's a motif that I've never even thought about, and it's Space Cowboys. Why has no one ever done Space Cowboys before? Space Cowboys is like the coolest idea ever. And if you think it is, then... Alright. Um, I haven't gotten much into Starhawk. Uh, I heard that I heard that the multiplayer was pretty neat. Can't do that, because I think, you know, they obviously took down the servers. So, I'm gonna have to look for, like, someone to couch co-op it with. Which, by the way, the game has couch co-op. That's amazing. That was around the time that, like, split-screen games were kind of not being a thing, and it was all online multiplayer. So the fact that this that Starhawk just straight up has split-screen multiplayer is, like, the coolest thing ever. I, I think it's awesome. But uh, another one of the things the game lets you do is it lets you, like, explore the multiplayer maps and kind of, like, play around with some of the mechanics without actually having... You know, other people in the map with you. And it's got some super interesting mechanics, uh, the multiplayer. Um, one of the things the game, like, as a whole has, one of the main mechanics is, like, building things that affect, you know, the gameplay. Like, you know, putting down a turret or building a wall to protect, like, the base you're supposed to be defending. And that carries over to the multiplayer. So players, uh, when they're near these generated things they gain more of the in-game currency and then they use that to to kind of like uh supply drop or whatever i don't remember the right word it's something drop like just things you know like i said turrets there's uh you could literally build spawn points for your team which is a super interesting mechanic uh i i could see how that could be definitely a beer you just get really lucky, get behind enemy lines, and then just build that there, and then, like, have your teammates just spawn there, but I don't know if that would work, because I, I can't play the multiplayer. Um, the game ha is also apparently around the time that they started, like, decreasing the size of game manuals, not getting rid of them entirely, just, you know, cutting them down in size, which sucks, uh, because the manual in Starhawk, you just, it's like, it's only a couple pages, it's like, maybe 12? Which I guess, to anyone playing games nowadays, that's absolutely massive. That's the equivalent of reading the entire Harry Potter series, and and then moving on to the Bible, and then the dictionary. Just A. Just A. That's it. Just A. But, a long time ago, game manuals were quite large and had a wealth of information inside of them. They were interesting to read and usually had unique, you know, motifs to fit the game that they were a part of, you know. They were super interesting and really fun to read. Seriously, when I was a kid, I'm only 18, so saying when I was a kid kind of sounds a bit douchey, but you get what I mean. When I was younger, I used to, I used to like, whenever I'd buy games, like physical copies of games, because back then digital downloads were like, not a thing, I would like just read and reread and like re-re-read uh, the game manuals for the game that I just bought because like they were so interesting and like it would give you a sneak peek into the game, like you'd learn the mechanics but you don't know how the ga the mechanics actually fit into the world. So if there was like some crazy like unique mechanic in this game, you would like just drive yourself insane trying to figure out like, wait, what does that mean? What is what? How how does that work? What is this strange like dark ritual that this game is asking me to perform? Which is 
th that was the fun part of like buying new games just like reading things sometimes they would come with like a story synopsis come to, sometimes the manuals would come with like like character bios it was always the most interesting thing in the universe so nowadays we've got like a slip of paper that might give you the controls and an in-game manual or tutorial which is kind of depressing uh, I love I loved manuals they were like the coolest parts of games let me see I have my copy of Dragon's Dogma here and it's got like a pretty decent manual. Oh shoot, this was before, this was released before Resi 6. It's got 20 pages, and that's counting the warranty, and it's got like, just all sorts of information, story and objective chapter. Like, it's, it's just the coolest. It's super interesting, and I love, love, love game manuals that have just tons of junk. So much stuff. And like the ma like the manual for for Dragon's Dogma has like it it makes it kind of look like a uh, like old tattered parchment. Super interesting. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, this was released by Capcom. Oh well, of course it had the Resi demo then. Idiot. I didn't know I didn't know that Dragon's Dogma was released by Capcom. All right, well, fair enough. It looks like it was developed and published by Capcom because I don't see any other names. Or maybe the maybe the people who developed this game, their names are behind Capcom in really tiny letters. It's actually made by Ubisoft. <sighs> I just made myself sad saying that. Hey, did you? Did you did you guys hear about that stupid fake controversy about uh, Far Cry 5 and how the uh, Christians? Well, so, I say it like it's everyone. Some people under the Christian faith believe that Far Cry 5 is an attack on their whole religion and faith or whatever because of the fact that you know you're playing as like a rebel against fighting against like religious extremists who are Christian crazy religious extremists like like hey believe in my god or shoot you in the face and also give me your wife so I can forcefully baptize her and probably accidentally drown her in the river nearby like all, like all good Christians uh, that joke was way more serious sounding than I'd intended it was meant to be sarcastic making fun of the people that think that Far Cry 5 is attacking their religion which by the way it's not have you not seen gameplay of like Outlast 2 that's more likely to be attacking religion which it isn't it's just the game is so aggressive about like it's a religious like front that it's, it's, it's a bit more than uh, needed, that's for sure. Not saying anything bad about Outlast 2. Well, I could say multiple bad things about Outlast 2, but I won't, because that's not the point of this video. There is no point to this video, I just realized. I wanted to play some freaking... I wanted to play some Gwent, but I couldn't. That's the point of this video. Anyways, ba -ba 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 -ba. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts as of late. Like, I like me some, some some podcasts. I think everyone should listen to the Super Best Friends cast, which they've started streaming their podcast now, which is where I got the idea to stream their mine. Like, they've streamed the recordings of their podcasts, so it's like them talking to, to you know, the live audience. And you could like see them in their environment sitting at their podcast set it's not really a set so much as it's just excuse me it's probably like a couch and like them recording into the microphone i gotta watch one of their stream uh their podcast streams because that sounds super interesting and it's also super interesting to see youtubers like the the best friends and stuff in their in their like environment 
whatever it's called. Ooh, I didn't know in this game you could like when you when you like summon a, you pull up one of the cards for the preview, you could wiggle around the controller and it wiggles around the cards. Blah 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 blah. blah. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, I've been watching, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, the Rooster Teeth podcast, of course, and, you know, all that fun stuff, which makes me want to, like, re, to have, like, more of a structure on, the, on my podcasts, my podcasts, depends on if I make this more of a thing, but, like, I really do want to have like structure on our podcast and we do have a structure it's just we never we never follow it properly that's for sure it's never like oh, okay now let's you know properly follow the structure of our podcast it's always okay here's the structure of the podcast that we stated is the structure and then i get yelled at because no one wants to follow the structure and they get mad at me because they think i'm like forcing the structure but i'm not i'm just stating no this is what we said is the thing that we're doing it's fun. Fun on a bun. Anyways, I think I'll end it here. This looks like a good place to end it. So, hope you enjoyed the... I, for now, I'm calling it Platinum Cast, but the title of the video might be different. Who knows? A... I don't know. I, 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 so I'm going to call it the Platinum Cast, but if I think of another name, I'll put it at the title of the video and stuff. So, hope you all enjoyed the Platinum Cast. You can like like it if you want, or subscribe to see more. Like when it's when my when my videos are released, you can hit the bell to be notified too. It's crazy. I hope to see you, cool cats, in the next whatever I'm doing. Because this is literally started off as an LP and turned into a podcast.